Hey, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to do a little troubleshooting on a compact sliding miter saw. It quit working on a buddy of mine, so let's go through the troubleshooting steps to find out what went wrong and see if I got it fixed. So welcome back, Terry Peterman here, the internet electrician. In the last video I put out about changing a breaker, I asked for some feedback on the channel and thanks to all those who took the time to comment. I had one comment in particular that was probably the nicest and most flattering comment I've ever had on the channel and it, things like that really give you the inspiration to carry on, so thank you for that. And also in that comment he mentioned that he liked the troubleshooting videos. So we're going to cover that in this video and also he said he'd like to see me tighten up the shots a little bit when I'm doing some close-up work. So let's see if we can get all that done in this video. Stay tuned and here we go. We'll start with the steps of troubleshooting this miter saw. Okay, so here's the saw and a close-up of the handle. When the guy brought it over to me, he said he had tried changing the micro switch inside here that the trigger operates. That didn't work, so then he went thinking maybe the brushes need to be changed in the motor, so he replaced the brushes. He actually brought me over the old micro switch for me to test and the brushes to see what kind of shape they were in and they were fine. So anyway, what the first thing I want to do is plug it in myself and make sure that it's not working now. Maybe something happened on the way over, you never know. I've had things that have brought to me and people think it's not working and it could be their cord, could have been their outlet, but let's plug it in and give it a try. Okay, it's plugged in, safety trigger, nothing, even give it a bang. Nope, nothing here. So we're going to have to remove this cover, do some troubleshooting. One thing I suspected may have happened when he's done all the things he's done is that I thought maybe the cord has a break in it somewhere. So first thing we'll do is open it up, find out if we got power into here. I see I've got one, two three, four, five, six screws, and there's one on the back side here to remove. So I'll do that with my drill. Okay, so I've plugged the unit back in. Of course, I had it unplugged while I removed that cover because you never know what's going to fly out of there. And let's check to see if my theory of a broken cable or a broken wire inside this cord is, is correct. So let's check right here at the terminal strip and see if we have 120 volts coming in, more or less. So let's look. Yes, I do have 122.3 volts coming in. So my multimeter set on volts, AC, auto ranging. Yes, we do have power, so that's not the issue. So now we look at the wires coming off of the terminal strip. We've got two white wires coming to this little transformer, which is the circuitry for the little LED light. So that LED light is the guide light. That's what that's all about. So there's two power wires coming to this little transformer off the terminal. The neutral goes directly down to the motor, which is down into here. I'll zoom in on that later so you can see that. That's where the motor cable comes up from the motor itself into this trigger assembly. The hot wire goes over here to this micro switch to the common terminal. So let's see if we have power at the common terminal. And I don't. So let's see what could be the problem here. Actually, I could tell that that spade connector is loose so I'm going to get right in on the cable itself on the spade and see if I've got power but at the terminal of the micro switch I don't so let's see if we do here yes we do but it's not getting to the micro switch itself so I suspect we've got a loose spade connector here so let's unplug it Pull that off and see if we can't find the problem there. Okay, so I did pull off this wire and I think I found what was the problem here. This connector that connects to the spade terminal on the micro switch 
was very, very loose. Now I'm surprised it didn't actually work by just shaking or moving of the saw, but no, it must have been just that loose that I had power on that terminal, on, this, on the connector itself, but not on the spade. So I pulled that off, just pinched it down a little tighter with my needle nose pliers to make a better connection and put it back on. So let's put the insulation back over it. Leave it open just a little bit so I get my meter in there to test. Put this back in place, poke the wires back down in their track. And let's plug it in and try it again. Neutral over here. Check for positive at the terminal itself on the micro switch and yes, we have voltage here now. So I would assume when I pull that trigger, that saw motor is going to go. So you're going to ask why we have a normally open and a normally closed terminal, which is a blue wire here. So that blue wire also feeds down to the motor and that's the brake. So when this switch is, in the normal, is open, the normally closed contact should have power on it because that operates the brake mechanism that stops the blade from spinning as soon as you let go of the trigger. So let's check that blue terminal to see if we have power. And we do not. So there's something wrong with this micro switch as well. So I'm going to pull the wires off it and we're going to check that micro switch with an ohm meter and see if it is indeed failed because that should have power on it right now that lets the, the brake actuate and stop that blade from spinning as soon as you let go of the trigger. Okay, so now that I pulled that wire off the common terminal for the second time here, this also might have contributed to the problem. As you can see, there's very little wire sticking out of the wire insulation here. And that's what was crimped onto this terminal. And we may have had more contact with the insulation than with the actual wire. So that's a defect right from the factory. So we'll fix that up again. Make sure we have a very good connection here. And then now that we've got it apart though, let us check to see if we have proper continuity through the normally closed of this micro switch. So I'll have to ask Doug if his saw blade wasn't stopping immediately when he let go of the trigger and see if that could be a problem with this brake mechanism is this micro switch. So I don't know if he changed back to his original one or what, I'll have to get the story on that, but it would appear to me this micro switch is not working as it should on the normally closed. So let's put my alligator clip onto my common terminal, switch my meter over to ohms for continuity and with the audible signal as well, back this out. Okay. So now check with continuity with the meter leads first and we have continuity there. So let's go from this now broken common terminal to what should be the normally closed and we don't have continuity. Clicking the switch doesn't make any difference. Check the normally open. Oh, drop that off. Get on there, little alligator clip. Okay, so we don't have continuity to the normally closed, which we should. And we do to the normally open. So once I fix up this common wire, the power wire into this micro switch, I think the saw is going to work, but we're going to have to change that micro switch to get the brake working. So let's hook it back up. See if I'm right, and then if so, we'll have to get the proper micro switch and put it back in there so the brake properly works. But for now, let's see if the saw is going to work for us. All right, so I found out that the old terminal wouldn't recrimp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this plastic protection here from the original tool, and I used a blue stake on here, spade connector. And I just pulled off this insulation because I would prefer to use this one. So we're going to recrimp this with a new connector. Give 
give that a good crimp with my T and B crimpers, Thomas and Betts. Use the jaws for the uninsulated type now because we took that insulation off. And give that a good squeeze. Check it, make sure it's good. And it is. Slide the coating back over it. And let's put this back together and see if my theory is correct in that the normally closed, well, I know the normally closed is not working, which it should be. And we'll see if the saw still works and then we'll replace that micro switch and make everything correct again. Hot wire on the common. Blue wire, brake wire on the normally closed. And the normally open for the motor of the saw itself. So again, tuck all these wires back into place. And because I'm going to want to change that micro switch, I'm just going to test it now and we won't put it back together until we get the proper micro switch. So let's check it out, plug it in. Okay, I've got it plugged back in. Got to be very careful now and make sure there's nothing in the way of the blade to give this a try with the trigger switch itself. So this plastic trigger actually just pushes that button on the micro switch to make it work. So making sure my fingers are clear of any hot wires. Give it a quick bump. And the saw works, but it does not break. So we'll change that switch, put it all back together, and we'll call it a day on this project. Okay, so let's just do a quick summary. I've got it all back together now, replaced that micro switch. It's working properly. The saw blade stops as soon as you let go of the trigger. So what did we find? We found a bad connection on the common terminal of the micro switch in here. So we fixed that up. We also found out that the normally closed of that micro switch didn't work. So we replaced the micro switch and we're back in business. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, click that notifications bell, and anything you want to comment on in the comments about this or any other subject matter that you'd like to see me cover, please do so in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Terry Peterman, The Internet Electrician.